Hello, welcome back. I've got some data here. Uh, I've got some CapEx expenditure. There's 13 rows per expenditure line item. So we need to pivot them or restructure them into a format that is actually useful. So I'm going to show you how to do that with the pivot by function. Let's start by using pivot by very simply. We'll skip the row fields and we'll use the column fields uh, of the attribute and the value column for the values. And then just for the sake of argument, I'm going to put the max function in here and we'll see what it does. Well, not super useful. It's given us just one row. And of course it has, because we skipped the row fields uh, and the columns are in the wrong order. Let's do something about that. Let's get this out of the way. We can create the right number of rows, one row in the output for 13 rows in the input by giving a row ID to each group of 13 rows. And we can do that like this. Let's try sequence, uh, let's try sequence and rows and say A2 to A79, just for, just to type that very quickly. Um, and then if we divide that by 13, we get these kind of funny looking numbers here, but notice that they're all leading up to one. These are all leading up to two. If we use roundup, roundup, not the pesticide, the function roundup, that gives us one for the first 13 rows, two for the second 13 rows and so on. And we can use that as the row fields in this pivot by function call. So let's say C2 hash, that gives us six rows. Better, but not perfect. First of all, let's get rid of these totals. We don't need a total row. We're just restructuring the data. We don't need a total column. We can just change this really quickly to row total depth zero, no totals, and column total depth zero, no totals. So that gets rid of the last row, the total row and the total column. But of course these numbers are not super useful and that's because I've just used the max function and max of a text field is not gonna give us anything useful. So let's try putting a different function in here. For example, let's try T. T will try to convert something into text. So that kind of works for the text attributes, but of course the numeric attributes are not working. Now let's think about this. Pivot by I think is really for aggregating, but if we don't want to aggregate, if we literally just want to kind of transpose each of the rows, we just want the intersection between say vendor and the value, which is this cell here. An implicit intersection in Excel is done with the at symbol, or you can use the single function. So if we put the single function in here, you'll see that I've actually now got all of the values that I need, text and numeric. Next thing we need to do is get rid of this column. We don't need this column. That's not part of the input data. We can do that using drop. Let's try drop here. And we want to drop one column. So a couple of things wrong here. First thing that's clearly wrong is the project code is missing from the first row and the project code is missing because I did not specify that there are no header rows in the data, but we are starting from row two. So there are no header rows from the data. Currently it's th it thinks this is the header row, which of course is not true. So I need to specify that and I do that in the field headers argument. If I put a zero in here, it will treat that as no, we don't have any headers and that will put the project code back in that first row. So the next thing that's wrong is that these have been sorted alphabetically, which is not what we want. We want them in this order, project code first, department vendor, all the way down to residual value. Now to do that is not as easy as you might think. There is no default kind of maintain order value for the sort parameter. So what we can do is add a column ID to each of the 13 rows within each group and uh, use that as one of the column fields. If that doesn't make sense, um, let me show you what I mean. We need a sequence here, a sequence of the rows in A2 to A79. But this one, we are going to start with zero. The reason will become clear in a moment. So that goes from zero all the way down to 77. And when we wrap that in mod like this, and we put a 13 in there, now we've got zero through 12 within group one, zero through 12 within group two, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the bottom, zero through 12 in group six. So this can now be a column ID because zero is always project code, one is always department and so on. And if we put this first, the output will be sorted by this numeric ID, which means these columns will also be in the correct order. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, this is the column fields. We can put H stack here and D2 a hash 
So we are now horizontally stacking this column ID with the attribute. And when we do that, you can see that uh, it is now sorted in the correct order, but we've just got this extra row at the top. So we can just get rid of that by modifying the drop function call in the rows parameter. We can just put one, we just wanna drop one. We'll be dropping one row and one column to get this output. So this is actually the correct output. So let's bring these helper columns into the formula uh, for now. So this is the uh, this is the first one. You can just copy that, and that is C two. So we can just put that in there. Which now that's embedded in the formula, we can delete that, and we can do the same with this one, which is D two hash. And where is it here? We can put that in there. Formula still gives the right output, and we can delete this. Okay, that is exactly what we need. But of course, you don't want to have to remember this big long formula every time you want to do something like this. And actually, this kind of behavior or this kind of transposition or this kind of transformation is quite common. So let's wrap all of this into a Lambda function so that we can make it much easier on ourselves. It just so happens I've already done that. So let's skip the formalities, come into the advanced formula environment and come into the modules where I've got this Lambda function called pivot every n rows. So what I've done is I've created a Lambda function of three arguments, attribute, which is the range representing this first column, value, which is gonna be the range or array representing the second column, and n, which is in this example, 13, but you know in other examples, it might be a different number, depending on how many attributes there are per row ID. First thing, we, we're using this rows of the attributes twice in the formula. You can see it actually here, rows A2, A79 is used once there, and it's used once here as well. So let's just call it rows and have rows attributes so that we can reuse that name. And this first part, the roundup part, uh, I've called row ID. So it's roundup, the sequence of the rows, so a sequence as long as the number of rows, divided by 13 and rounded up to zero decimal places. That's the row ID. The column ID is the mod part. So the sequence of the rows again, but starting at zero and taking the mod uh, 13 of that sequence. That gives us this column ID. And then pivoted is the entire pivot by call, which is all this business here. We've taken out the totals. We've made sure that we've said there are no field headings. And what we've done is pivot by the row ID and then the stacked column ID with the attribute and then the value, we're using the single function to get the implicit intersection between each column and row. Um, we've got rid of all that stuff and we've called that pivoted. And then finally, the output is that drop function call where we are passing in the pivoted dynamic array. We're dropping the first row and the first column to give us the output. So that's pivot every N rows. And I can show you how it works by just going pivot every N rows and attribute that one and let's just type it this time b2 to b79 and then it's 13 and enter so that's it that's how you transform uh, stacked data like this into a properly cross tabulated table um, without using power query without using vba just using pivot by and a few helper functions that's it thanks have a great day